right, welcome to this uh, kind of impromptu video. I had a question on my YouTube channel from a viewer that asked about inking. And um, I had done a, a review on the, the Pentel Pocket Brush Pen. And uh, I had mentioned a video where I had talked about my inking style and how to ink and stuff. So I thought instead of just pointing that viewer to the uh, the video, I would do a little demo on how I ink. Now, I'm actually using a digital um, pen here, so I'm not using the, the Pentel Pocket Brush pen, but I would suggest you go back and watch that video if you haven't seen it. But uh, here's a little drawing that I did uh, actually a while ago. I just redrew it for this demo. And I'm gonna ink over this, and I'm gonna show you how I ink and where I put the thick and thin lines. And uh, so, the mentality that I, I take to a drawing when I do this, when I do my inking, is I assume there's a light source somewhere, even though I'm, I'm using only ink lines. And uh, for, this, for this one, I'm going to assume that the, the, the light source is, you know, something like that. Okay, so it's coming in from the upper right. And so um, to, to show you how I, how I think when I ink, and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make on this particular layer, I'm just going to throw some, some shadow in just to show you where the, the if, if I was rendering this out, where the, uh, the shadows would fall on the shapes. So you have to be thinking about the, the shapes of the images, the, the objects inside the image. And... Um, I'll tighten some of these up as I go over this, but uh, shadow under here. Everything away from where the light source is, for the most part, will get a thicker line. And anything that's closer to the light source that would be brighter um, will have a will have a thinner line. So that's kind of how I think about it. You know, under under the face, the jaw right here would get a thicker line under the lip. Um, right there, um, the lower left-hand side of things will tend to get the, the thicker line treatment, okay? And your eyes kind of make sense out of that. It, whether you're thinking, oh, that's where the, the shadow is, um, on these objects or not, it your eye, it, it, it ends up being pleasing to your eye because it's making some sort of sense. That adds to the beauty of, of the, uh, the inking lines. Whereas if you had thick and thin kind of all over the place and it didn't make any sense, it, it might still look okay, but it won't have that zing to it that that's something that reads well for your eye. And so that's what I try to do. So. I, I could change it too and make that light source come from a different direction. I'd be thinking the line weight would be heavier away from the light source opposite of whatever, if it was on the, the left over here, then I would make everything over on the right side thicker, okay? The other thing to keep in mind too is that um, everything on the contour of the object will be thicker as well. So uh, you've got uh, an object here or a a thing here where you want to separate the shapes out okay so you've got the nose coming out from the rest of the face but you've got the outside line of the face too or the the whole body the whole object of this person okay so that's the first thing if this was against a background you would want this person who apparently is closer to the camera to stand out from the background. And so line weight plays a role there too, because then a thicker line weight and a lighter line weight in the background, so thick on the, this guy right here and then thinner in the back would help push him forward visually. Okay, but then you have line weights inside. So you have objects inside this person here too. So the, uh, the thicker ones will tend to be on the outside and then Things on the inside will be a little less thick so that that sets it inside. 
the object. And then things inside inside will be even thinner detail. So then all by himself, some of these things will make sense. It's a little bit opposite from punching him out from the background because the outside line weight of his will be thicker than the line weights back here if there was something in the background. And then the objects inside him, which like this chin line right here, that'll still be a thicker than some other ones. You gotta think major and minor shaped masses. Um, there's a lot those line here, but so there's some details like this. This line right here is just a, a crease in the face. And this crease right here, and this wrinkle right here, and this part right here. Those will be smaller thickness, okay? Not not as great thickness, but anything that's a shape against another shape that you want to separate out, you make those thicker too. So, so let's go ahead then, and with, with that kind of general information, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to ink this guy. And if, if this was on a piece of paper, he would probably be inked in pencil, and so that would be gray. But when I do this on a board, I like to, uh, or uh, on digitally, I like to make a different color. Usually I'll do red or blue for what, whatever mood I'm in. <laughs> so uh, I'll take this guy and I'm actually going to lighten him up a bit. So I like the, the, the different color of ink for red or blue. And then I like to push that uh, opacity back so that uh, I can clearly see the ink line that I'm making. So I'm, I'll use black. Sometimes I use blue when I ink and then I'll convert it to black later on. So we're gonna zoom in on this guy right here and I'm gonna choose my, my uh, thick and thin hard edged brush, which kinda is the same in a sense as the, uh, the Pentel pocket brush. So if I, um, if I push lightly, I get a thin line. If I push more, I get a thick line. So you just practice on doing that. If you get the Pentel pocket brush, it takes a little bit of uh, practice to get a, a handle on that. But after a while, when your fingers start getting used to the to the body English that's that you use to make that thick and thin line, it is fun and it's kind of like you learn how to ice skate or roller skate. It's kind of clumsy at first, but the more that your feet get used to, your muscles acclimate and you're, you're learning how to do it. After a while, you don't think about it and you're just having fun. So just think about it kind of like that. So uh, again, the outside lines are gonna be thicker generally. And Thick and thin lines on something to add a nice variety. It gives it a nice, just a, you can, all the lines on the red line artwork here are all mono thickness. They're the same thickness. And it's, it's, it's a fun drawing, but when you see the thick and thin added to it, you're gonna go, ah, that's so much better. So again, light sources coming up here. I'm gonna start with a thin line. And then as I go away from the light and I kind of curve in, I'm gonna go dark or thicker. Okay, so that's what that's what I'm thinking right here. And then thick, thinner, thick, thinner. So I'm on the bottom of the hair right there. Right there, there's the bottom away from this. So think shadow type of thing. Moving away from the light source, it gets darker. So that's how I do that. Maybe other people that have different methods of doing it, but that's how things make sense for me. Now, again, the, the, the lines inside a mass of whatever it is, I'll try to make those a little lighter so that your, your eye kind of differentiates between um, a major mass like this hair versus, you know, some a hair inside. I guess I could have made that a little bit thinner, but... Uh, go and sometimes I make changes when I ink two versus what the pencil show all right see the thick and thin there or the th the thicker that I'm adding away from the light source and then 
on the outside of the shape. Now, you don't have to make your line that thick either. I mean, sometimes the, the difference in the thick and thin, depending upon your flavor, is, is much more subtle. Um, I, I tend to like thicker lines, and so, but you could, um, you know, you could do a line kind of like that. It's not as bold, but it still has some of that little thickness here and there. So I'm going to take that, fatten that up a little bit. I like thicker lines. Okay, so this line's inside again, but uh, I want I want that chin to pop out. So still on the outside, the head is a major shape too of importance. So so the shadow would be underneath his face. And then the uh, the mouth is important too. Okay, but like I said, the crease is in his face then. Into, well, let's see, we'll do the lip here, stands out a little bit. Got that tongue hanging out. Another shape to differentiate from. And then mouth open the teeth inside but these little lines right here will be thinner now this gets close i go thicker up because the crease is getting bigger by the nose so that kind of breaks the uh the general rule of the light sources up here i got thicker when i was going towards it but that's because i want that line to read that that's a bigger crease by the nose and it kind of lessens as it goes away again practice is the key here most of the time when i'm inking i'm not really thinking too much about it because it just becomes second nature after a while but you do think about it you know, when I'm out roller skating, I'm consciously doing some things and the other things I'm not so much. It's funny, I used to uh, teach roller skating at a roller rink. And when you do that, you have to stop and go, okay, now how do I, what's my <clears throat> skate, what are my skates doing? You're doing it, but you don't think about it. It's just become second nature. And so when you got to teach it, you got to break it down for yourself. Kind of analyze what you're doing. Now again, that <clears throat> that light source here is more uh, physically represented by the highlight in the eye. The gleam in the eye also represents that that light source is in the upper right. So in fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna go back and erase that. Make that better. There we go. Oops, I need my pen back brush so for inking i will use a tool sometimes it makes a uniform line and then i'll touch it up sometimes with something that makes a varied line but uh, the line variation is something that i really really enjoy you'll find that practicing with Line variation will help your overall dexterity of things that you do. You just develop this light touch in your drawing. Very, very good. Good exercise. Okay, so we're going to, it's, it's thicker, but we're still in the light source area and then it's thicker thicker as I go down away from the uh, away from the light sources up here and sometimes as I go into the body I make that line fade away so it does get thinner thicker 
I'm exaggerating some of this just to make the point here, but uh, and if you've ever done calligraphy, it's it's much the same. You're making those pen strokes, and so you go, you know, that sort of thing where you uh, you learn how to do that after a while, and you just don't think about it. But there is a hierarchy of thick, thickness and thinness just with what object is what inside what other object or what's the uh, positioning of a particular object in space versus another one. All right, so I hope this is making some sense to you. And when I get done with this, I'll flash between the two. Want that chest to pop out. And I'm kind of changing some things. Sometimes doing shadows, I will draw little lines like this. I can just color that one on the inside in. So it kind of gives like a, a gradation type of shadow. Again, all those things you can practice and develop your touch for that. But inking can be very relaxing. I've known people that uh, that would just do it for fun and, and practice. There was a guy at the art school that I went to, and he would just sit down with a, a, a copy of someone else's pencils, and he would sit down there with a light box, and he would just ink for practice. And uh, it was, it was, it's good to, uh, to look at other people's artwork, too. Oops, now that looks like mine. The advantage of doing this digitally, I can undo something. So tracing and that sort of stuff, sometimes people look down on that. But it actually is very beneficial for an artist to even trace other people's artwork. You learn their techniques, um, some of their thinking rubs off on you. Just don't take credit for it, though. Look what I did. Now, in the comic book realm especially, um, you if you look at the credits for who did the artwork, you'll notice that um, there's inkers and there's, there's pencilers. And... So some people get paid to ink over other people's artwork. An inker is a position. So if I hadn't done this drawing underneath and I was inking someone else's artwork, that's actually a, a job that you can get. And if you're fast and, and you interpret the pencils well, sometimes a penciler will can request you sometimes as anchor. However that works out. Pop that thumb out over that dish cover that shadow down right there ooh that nail is terrible right there I think that's a better interpretation of it again trying to think of shape and overlap I'm just going to draw a solid shadow there just make a line like that but always be thinking shape this shape against another shape where that light source is and where the shadow is going to be thrown. And um, your, your artwork will come alive if those lines mean more than just being kind of a, eh, it's a line because there's a shape there. Be thinking through form and light source and all those things. Oops. Because even just 
drawing lines. Your eye can read those things. God has made our eyes and our brains to understand those things, and it's a wonderful, complex computer system that we have in our bodies. All right, so let's back that up. And, all right, I forgot a couple wiggle lines. And the wiggle lines are kind of fun. Um, I tend to make them thinner than, you know, I think it would be out of place if I made them like this thick. That's too much. But, uh, and you can put a little line variation in them too. Let's break the bottom of his. Um, I'll thicken that up a little bit. And maybe on the inside here of his shirt. Throw some of that in. I'm going to make some shadow, solid shadow on here just so we can take that to the other side. And let's erase right here. Get some separation. Little lot for the arm. Hmm, that's all right. And there's a couple other places here. I'm going to thicken up some lines first before we. All right. Looks pretty good. Let's uh. Let's compare that to the lines underneath. And I'll tell you what, I'll um this put a sketch is right there. Put a um a layer of white over there. No, <laughs> all right. Again, I'm doing this on the fly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this layer. I'm just trying to preserve everything so I don't it doesn't change if I want to use it later sometime. Um, so let's duplicate that layer, and then we'll reduce this guy down. Put him over here, and then this one. Duplicate him as well. Put him over here. You can get a side by side. Compare size wise. We're fairly in the ballpark. Okay. And then to make it also fair, good comparison. We're gonna uh, we're gonna make that black. I need to open, bring the opacity back up. Okay. So run my one one. Oh, it's making it white. There we go. Okay, black. So, so there's the two side by side, and of course, this has a really thin line, so it's much more subtle. Contrast of uh, thick and thin is not there. See how the the thick and thin really adds a pizzazz to is a real zing to this guy right here. For this guy, it's it's an okay drawing, but it just doesn't have that oomph to it. So anyway, I hope that that helps with knowing about where to put the thick and thin lines. Uh, let me know if, uh, if this video is helpful to you. And, you know, if you want me to draw this or do this demo again with the Pentel pocket brush actually in my hand and uh, do this on a piece of paper, an actual piece of paper instead of on a computer, if that would be helpful for you too, let me know, and and I'll 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 do something like that in the future. But for right now, I think this um, gives a more complete answer to the the, the thick and thin question than uh, any of the previous videos I've done so far. So, all right, thanks for watching, and uh, give me some likes and subscriptions, and please share my uh, my my YouTube channel with others, and I'll see you again in future videos. Thanks for watching.